Okay, so Satan defiled the sanctuary. Just somebody walk in on me. That's that's fine. And they that's fine. Because Satan defiled the sanctuary. Now we go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. And this is your key. This is your glossary key to understanding this particular verse. Revelation 3, 18. I counsel thee. This is, I'm telling you, I am the counselor. I am the wonderful counselor. You listen to me. I counsel thee of me gold tried in fire. That's the purity. No dross hanging on to it. That thou shalt mayest be rich and white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. What's God saying? God's word is gold. If you present it as dirty and polluted with human traditions and thought patterns, he's saying, now clean my word from that dirty covering. This is the most valuable thing to have the love of Christ in your heart, have a working knowledge of the Bible because you go somewhere when you die and God expects that of you. They carried the valuable things. That's all he's saying. Gold and silver. Where, where's their temples? Their temples are the banks, the investment companies, and all these things that invest in anything as long as there's a return. Who cares about, who cares? I, uh, we invest in anything as long as there's a return and exploits humanity, child labor, labor exploitation, destroying the planet, turning it into a chemical toilet. So that's verse, verse uh, chapter Joel 3, verse 5. And the children of Judah, also, and the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, have you sold into the Grecians that they might be removed them from far their border? What we're talking about here is far off lands. People end up working for far off lands. We end up working here and someone else somewhere somewhere else is profiting from it. Okay, we're talking about one worldism here. We're talking about, again, humanity becoming surplus and expendable. Now watch this. Now it says the Grecians here. We're just I studied this word Grecians. I ran the threads through the Bible and the word Sabians coming up. And it just means distant land. That's how biblical usage of these words are used. Distant land. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your head. What do you mean sold them? How did they sell us? There's your key there to understanding the last verse. Sold and sold and sell. Sell and sold are the same words. Mekar in the Hebrew. As merchandise into slavery. Human slaves into rich white man's construct. Do you ever notice you don't see the word employee in the Bible? We're slaves. People are slaves to the stuff. Their stuff owns them. We have people around here who think that going around thinking that they have something to prove to others to fill their own inner void by their stuff and things. We have people around here that go around and, and get lines of credit and start buying stuff and think that that makes them better than us. People have come here. And said, let me buy your truck. Let me buy your. Let me buy your property. Let me buy your tradesman, just like I used to be. Big shot. They're trying to fill an inner void, an inner emptiness with stuff and things. It's all junk. It all comes with the planned obsolescence, being sellouts, and it's forbidden to give to the rich, as it's written in the book of Proverbs, which I don't feel like looking for it right now. It's forbidden to give to the rich to profit. You know what? I'm gonna have to find it now. It's Proverbs chapter 22, and we go there all the time. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. Who supports this dangerous system of things? Investors, stakeholders, stake, stake, stakeholders, shareholders. They're the ones that support this. This is a dangerous system of things. And you've got to be careful what you're supporting. Now, let's what about sell as merchandise into slavery. Yeah, you don't think that you're a slave to your stuff? Then don't show up for work for a couple weeks and see what happens. Don't show up for work. Just say, I'm going to go do what I want to do. What's happened? That stuff owns you. The more stuff you accumulate, the more you're owned by this system of things that always, always profits. No matter what. Whether it's a world disaster, war, doesn't matter. It always profits. Now let's go to the next verse, verse 8. And I will sell your sons and daughters into the hand of the children of Judea, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people afar off, for the Lord has spoken it. Why? Let's look at this, what's going on here. We're in the valley of Jehoshaphat. And this sell means to be given over. To be given over to the heathens on judgment day. Like people can't cling on to you after you've studied 
and serve God and not served yourself. These people have served themselves and they're going to have lots of time to cry about it later. And we pray for them, but they can't say, hey, I, I know that guy over there. I know those people from the companion chapel. I know them and try and hang on. Yeah, I'm with these people. I don't think so. You go over there. We earned our spot. We were humble and we were meek. We learned to say no to ourselves in the face of all the vain curiosities that come up to us in front of us. We know the difference between right and wrong, our thoughts, intents, our actions. We know how to afflict ourselves with self-discipline. We don't look at others. I'm better than you because my pickup truck and my car beside it and my stuff and my pool in the back, that's a sad existence to think that money can buy you happiness, respect, integrity. I think I went over that when I was looking for the book of Psalms before. Character, respect. Money can buy pleasure. Soon to be outdated junk that will never love you back. The only thing that will love you back is the Lord Jesus Christ. It will grow. That stuff you buy, that you personify, and you think it gives you social status, these are the people that we sell to them. You guys had your chance. We feel no happiness whatsoever inside of us that you have to go over there to the hell side it, it's heart-wrenching for us don't cling on to me while we're in the valley of jehoshaphat it's a one-on-one -on -one judgment you will meet your maker you will be there no matter what even if you pass right now and don't forget fate will not negotiate you will die no matter how big of a star you think you are you will die at the most inconvenient time and you better have your psyche in order your flesh body who cares in the dirt your psyche, your spirit, the intellect of your soul, that's what you're judged by. Your thoughts, your intents, your actions. What's on your account? And immediately, as it's written in Lazarus and the rich man, some people are over with the rich man. Look at that bossy, arrogant, aggressive person, that rich man, trying to boss Abraham around with Lazarus. Tell Lazarus to go get me a glass of water. Stat, I'm thirsty. Look at my tongue. Those people are going to be over there. Hey, if you're an argumentative person, then you can go around and sit around and be with argumental people for a thousand years and knock yourselves out. If you're a whiner or a sniveler, go over there. Oh, my life was so terrible. God's not judging what happens to you. He's judging what you do. And if you want to be around with people like that, there's going to be a ton of them over there too. Aggressive people, angry people, all the trademarks of evil. Those people will be over there. And it's only fair because if they were with us in the kingdom of heaven, it would be nothing more than a new hell. Do you want proof? There's your proof right there. Arrogance and aggression. Attitudes of obscene entitlement fueled by ruthless, unadulterated greed. No care that we fell out of harmony with the universe. And we know, me and you know, th through this book, how to get back to a place of peace beyond our present comprehension. Our Lord Jesus Christ laid the path. And that path is straight. We don't lay the path. When it says in the Bible, keep Christ's path straight, we, the path is straight. How do you keep a path not straight? By wandering off of it. He is the path. He is the way. He is the light. He is the truth. He is that great separating force between right and wrong, good and evil, and heaven and hell. And here we go. Yeah, you're not going to be clinging on to us. And that's the way she goes. You've exhausted your caregiver. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war and make the mighty man. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. This is happening now. As if you can't see it. As if you can't see these big dynasties. This dynasty of, of the military. This dynasty of big food, big pharma, big chemical, big government. This dynasty of big tech. Big news. This dynasty of censorship starring the American government officials and big tech. Obviously. Their war, it is a war, it's a psychological warfare, but here's Stephen talking about physical war, which we're on the brink of never before in the history of mankind has there been a aggressive military alliance like this NATO. Never. Hey, let's talk about Finland. Hey, way to go, Finland. Just join NATO. Has there ever been a military, aggressive military alliance that has created peace in the history of mankind? Never. And this is the most dangerous military alliance. They spend trillions of dollars pushing democracy. What is your greatest export, United States? Like, seriously, I'm not dogging the people. I'm dogging the policies, the officials, the unelected world leaders, and these 
little horns that come up in between. These dynasties of Satan, this dynasty of the military, and the dynasty of false information coming through the global media. That's the fifth file, fifth seal, fifth trump. What is your greatest export? I'll look at America, Canada, Brazil, I'll look around. America's greatest export is bombs. And they, then they write on each bomb, this is democracy. <laughs> it's just a joke. It's a joke. Like, it's, it's so sad, but it's true. It's sad, but true. Yeah, we're going to, yep, here comes some bombs. This is American democracy. <laughs> it's just too funny. It's not funny at all because a lot of people are suffering for it. Listen, if, if, if people are getting wiped out by these American bombs, they haven't seen the Bible yet, they're in the kingdom of heaven. That's all there is to it. All right, let's stay on subject here. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I'm strong. Hey, that's what's going on here with the with the American military industrial complex. Oh, yeah, I forgot to talk about Finland. Way to go joining NATO. Way to go. Because now Vladimir has nuclear weapons pointed at you, Finland. What did you think? Vladimir wants your fjords, Bjorn? <laughs> like, seriously. Like, why would you join NATO, Bjorn? Anyways, there you go. Now we got nuclear weapons up there too. All encompassing of Earth. You know, hey, you're supposed to expand NATO. Like, what do you think? When you infringe on somebody else's territory, I don't know what Finland thinks. No one cares about your fjords except on calendars and you guys that are living by them, okay? Let's get that straight. Now your nuclear... Uh, component has to be uh, up to UN military standards in Finland. Way to go, Finland. Proclaim you this. Okay, we're talking about war here. In Isaiah chapter 2, it's opposite. Why? Because we're just a little bit ahead in the seventh file, seventh seal, seventh trump. Okay? Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather yourselves together around about the th thither cause thy mighty ones. Oh, come down, O Lord. And let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Everybody's there. We're quickened in spirit. We're out of these flesh bodies. We're all there. It's a cloud of witnesses. God will sit there and judge all the heathen round about. God is fair. You write your own sentence. Where you go when you die and you go somewhere when you die, don't you think otherwise? Flesh body in the dirt. Your psyche goes somewhere. It is a closed system. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. We're not exchanging physical matter right now when we're talking, are we? It's a closed system. Energy does not create any heat. Your psyche, your spirit, the intellect of your soul, your reactive attitude that motivates all action, that's your character, your personality. That's who you are. What you are is one of God's children. And all of us are God's children. One third of us fell out of harmony with the universe and we have to get back. And it's up to all of us to try and get each other back. And some people just can't be helped, man. You exhaust your caregiver. Put you the sickle in for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the press is full. The vats overflow and the wickedness is great. Angels are the reapers. This is the same closing as Revelation chapter 14. Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. That's the valley of the Jehoshaphat. Hey, God's going to wrap up the affairs of time in this flesh age. And personally, I can't wait. And I want to see you there. Companion Chapel is a registered nonprofit ministry. Whatever God-given talents you have, God expects you to use it. And the many member body of Christ, get a hold of me here at the Companion Chapel at gmail.com. Come out for a Bible study every morning. Just show up every morning. And sanctify to God. That means signal to God, signal to me, signal to others. That you're a man, woman, or child of God. You walk up this driveway, this laneway, and I'll give you the address with the Bible in your hand. And then you signal to others. This is what's the most important. Where we go when we die. The love of Christ to be in our hearts. He performed the most selfless act of love and compassion beyond our present comprehension. Was Calvary at the cross. He suffered for you and because of you. For me and because of me. I could just go to pure self-mortification, just absolute self-shame. Christ did not have to manifest a little lower than the angels for us and walk amongst us. He did not have to do that. He knew he was going to take the lowest earthly position for us. He knew he was going to be innocent, not guilty. But he knew this. He could say this. Satan, you got nothing on me. And Father is going to mop you up in a bucket. 
and slosh you down the sides of the pit. Don't get sloshed down with Satan. Look what he's doing to us. But we are perpetuating it. We have to take responsibility for our actions today in the here and now. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have yourself the greatest day. Like, subscribe, and share. It helps with the algorithms because obviously I'm at the bottom of the algorithms. And I just blindly upload these. There's 800 million videos on YouTube. So if you're watching this, that is a miracle. I want to thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day. And bye for now.